Comedy Central stand-up presents Jabuki Young White. Give it up for Jabuki Young White. You guys are way too sweet, man. You guys are way too sweet. <laughs> so tonight, I want to start off talking about something a little important, right? Um, something that I think applies to a lot of us. It's a popular topic today, feminism. <laughs> uh, but with a little bit of a twist tonight, right? Feminism. <laughs> For men! <laughs> yeah, sorry ladies, you know? <laughs> But like, for real, sorry. <laughs> okay, so like, yes, you know, like, <laughs> men can be feminists, right? Like, my bro's always like, Chad, how can you be a feminist if you're always trying to get girls, you know? And I'm like, well, don't mansplain me? <laughs> <laughs> Chill. Uh, and if you guys don't mind, I'd love to share a really quick anecdote with you, if that's cool. <laughs> so I was pledging at ASU Go Devils, and... <laughs> I noticed, like, when I was sitting down to pee, I was getting drunk a lot, I was, like, sitting down to pee, and noticed, like... <laughs> something, like, wrong, <laughs> you know? But it turns out, no, that's just the beginning stages of male feminism, everybody! <laughs> Happens to everybody. Okay, so, what is feminism, right? Uh, that's a question that's on everybody's mind, and only Lena Dunham really seems to know the answer, so... <laughs> I'd love to like just also before I start this part of the show, fam, which is my favorite gender neutral way to address a crowd. <laughs> if I ask you a question, feel free to answer from your heart, not necessarily your mind, right? So if you were going to say like, what is feminism? What would you say? Equality between the sexes. Okay, equality between the sexes, give it up, yeah! All right, all right. And if you were gonna just like spitball a year, Spitball a year that feminism started, what would you say? Ooh, 1970? 1970s, okay, give it up. Um, close, it was actually, uh... <laughs> it was actually 2013. <laughs> it was started by the musical recording artist, Beyonce. Uh, she has this album that like really breaks everything down. I couldn't get the rights to play it even though my dad is a lawyer, <laughs> so. Uh, I just got this quote that sort of just like breaks everything down. Uh, Visionary feminism is a wise and loving politics. It is rooted in the love of male and female being, refusing to privilege one over the other. Who do you think said that? Beyonce. Okay, close. It was actually <laughs> Solange, the creator of black feminism. That's just a feminist enjoying nature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are probably like, okay, Chad, like how could you just drag us like this and like not give us anything to do? And it's like, well, I'll give you guys something very actionable that we could all start doing right now. We gotta stop catcalling, you guys. <laughs> we gotta stop it. I personally, I never really like catcalled in real life. I was more of like a digital catcaller. I would just like open Tinder messages and be like, what's up, queen? My face is the throne, you know, like. <laughs> Just sort of <laughs> stuff like that, but I don't do that anymore because I'm wiser. Now, I just drop facts about female scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalind Franklin is remembered for her breakthrough discoveries in the structure of DNA that she never celebrated due to an untimely death, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Put your own spin on it, you know? <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at WokeWoke94, everybody! <laughs> okay, what's up, you guys? What's up, New Orleans? Yeah, oh my God. What's up? <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to be in New Orleans. It's way colder than I was expecting it to be here. It's like a dangerous level of cold outside right now where like a cold wind blows, you just like wake up in an Ikea like three years deep into a monogamous relationship, you know? 
<laughs> you drink a latte too fast, you're just like at your own flash mob proposal, just like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I was living in L.A. for a year. Um, that shit was whack, honestly. <laughs> it was whack. I, like, tried doing, like, all the California stuff, too. Like, when I was out there, I tried going vegan for a while. Um, very up and down process, mostly just because whenever I would stand up, I would just, like, <laughs> <laughs> pass out. <laughs> Wake up, someone's doing my birth chart for me. I also, I also tried yoga while I was in LA, because I was like, yoga's easy, right? That's just like laying on the ground for 45 minutes. I could do that. And then like halfway through the first class, I was just like on the floor, just, just shaking. The instructor came up to me like, you can give up or you can try. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I feel so attacked by this dude in a spiritual gangster crop top. <sighs> Trying to gentrify my muscles right now. I also love how yoga has basically just become like a slow electric slide for white people at this point. <laughs> like, to the left. Take it back now, y'all. Now maintaining that breath one hop this time. <laughs> also, white people, y'all went the f off when you made buffalo cauliflower. Like, oh, <laughs> wow, that's so good. Like. Keep that energy up, you know, like, <laughs> stop calling the cops, get in the kitchen. Like, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I was like, you know what, like, any exercise I do is gonna be difficult. That's kind of the point of exercise. I might as well go all the way. I'm gonna take an MMA class. I'm gonna learn how to fight. <laughs> I did learn one cool thing from this class. I learned that if someone is attacking you, standing up like this, right, what you gotta do is you gotta stick your arm up, twist your body, drop your elbow, you can get out of the hold safe, right? But the instructor prefaced that saying like, sometimes you're in the middle of a fight, you don't have time to do all that choreo or whatever. <laughs> you gotta do whatever it takes to get out of that hold. And I was like, okay, bet, got you. My sparring partner put his hand around my throat and I went, <laughs> daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and he let go, you know? Sometimes love wins, that's all it takes. <laughs> I, was, I was taking a lot of ride shares when I was in LA because I can't drive because I'm gay, and I... <laughs> I had this one driver this one time, he had a 3.8 rating. Like, are you murdering people? <laughs> I got out the car like zigzag into my apartment, <laughs> just in case a guy turned around and just, <laughs> just blow darted me, you know? <laughs> Took my phone, gave himself five stars. These drivers be thirsty. I was trying to smash a couple though, honestly. Um, they were cute. There was this one time I got in the car, like I got really close, right? Get in the car, we were like flirting, making small talk. He's like, oh, where are you coming from? And I was like, a show. He's like, oh, what instrument do you play? And I was like, the voice. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I do stand up or whatever, and I say or whatever, so he thinks that I'm humble. And, <laughs> and then he goes, oh my God, like, I love stand up. I've written a couple jokes, but I'm a little nervous to get on stage and try it. And I was like, oh my God, you seem like you have such a natural stage presence. <laughs> but he was like, cute. So I was like, you know what? How about this? How about you just like tell me a joke right now in the car and we can just like work on it together? And he was like, are you sure? I don't want to like waste your time. I was like, no, just go for it. He's like, okay, okay. So uh, me and my girlfriend, I was like, needs work. <laughs> <laughs> right here is fine, actually. Uh, you ain't got to slow down. I'll just roll. That's cool. <laughs> I'm very addicted to technology. It's like, it's kind of a problem. I realized I was addicted to technology when I got robbed and this dude was like, is your phone worth your life? And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> And then I stole his phone. Um, <laughs> ran away and followed myself on Twitter from his phone, which, which was cool. Um, the thing that makes me the saddest about technology though is like, there's so many jobs that are just disappearing. And it's like, what's gonna happen to the bootleg DVD salesman, you know? And that makes me so sad, because I used to love watching bootleg DVDs. 
Because it's like whenever you would watch it, you were never alone. Because it's like you're watching it with that person, you know? <laughs> you'd be in the middle of the movie, you just hear like, <laughs> <laughs> that boy Nemo about crazy as hell. <laughs> and I'd be like, damn, Nemo is crazy. <laughs> Didn't even realize that till just now. <laughs> But I, I do, I love like learning like about sciences, learning about tech, stuff like that. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to research which animals are gay. Um, you know, giraffes, bias, <laughs> you know, something about the neck, we don't know. But there's not that much research done about which bugs are gay, right? And I've looked it up, I've done some of my own, and they said that sometimes like two male bugs will like mistake each other for a female and like accidentally have sex. And it's like, okay, I went to college. Um, <laughs> so I made a slide that's a very comprehensive list of which bugs are gay or not, so let's go. Um, dragonflies, the fact that dragonflies will just like hover in air perfectly still like that, not moving, gay. That requires classical training, you know? Like, they went to drama school. Ladybugs, every ladybug is a lesbian. <laughs> Honestly. Look, they got this bold lipstick right here, but you, if you zoom in, there's Birkenstocks on every, <laughs> on every one of these. Uh, beetles, lesbians, that's a strap. Um, <laughs> The fact that you're so willing to hurt someone that you would die for it, that's gay. <laughs> like, the pettiness that that takes. Very gay, and they worship a queen, like, come on, you know? Wasp, wasp are straight. <laughs> it's a visual feeling, I don't need to explain it, we all get it. And look at that interior design, you know, like. It's just not up to par. Butterflies, gay. I mean, come on. You know, they go in the cocoon, college, they pop out, they start thotting, you know. It, it, classic queer narrative. Um, cicadas, the fact that they just like take off their clothes and leave it anywhere, that's straight, you know? It's like, pick up after yourself, cicadas. Gay! <laughs> Every Frank Mantis is gay as <laughs> Look. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Let's get these amens. <laughs> Scorpions, are they insects? Are they spiders? Neither, they're bi. Um, <laughs> cockroaches are gay because they're everywhere and you'll never get rid of them. Um, <laughs> ants, with ants it's like, you're working so hard, what are you hiding? I just think ants need to do some soul searching. <laughs> and Zeddy Longleg's gay. <laughs> and that is a complete list of all the bugs that are gay. I know because I f***ed them all. Uh, <laughs> I went to Catholic school growing up, so if someone could explain sex to me after the show, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, our sex education was basically like we were in the chapel um, and we're like talking about sex. Sister Jean Patrice is, is leading it. Uh, I shouldn't say her name. <laughs> Sister was leading the, the sex ed talk in the chapel and Jesus is just like on the cross like staring at us. Um, also, Jesus be looking cute as f on the cross sometimes. Honestly, like, <laughs> like highlighter popping, abs right, just like. Oh, yes, uh, my king of kings. Uh. But the presentation started, Scissor took up this cup of water and she passed it to a kid. She's like, spit in that cup. And the kid's like, no. <laughs> and she's like, no, just spit in it, pass it around the room. She spits in it, passes it around the room. It gets to the last kid. And Scissor's like, now drink that. And she's like, see? Gross, right? That's your body when you have sex before marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, I was like, that's dumb, that's false, that's not scientifically accurate. 
And then I was in the middle of a hookup the other day. We were both very drunk, and I felt drool just hit me in the eye. And I was like, sister was right. <laughs> Should have waited till gay marriage. Snatch Jesus would have protected me. No, he would have. <laughs> I think I realized I was gay. I was pretty young. I was probably like nine or ten, I think. I think other people started to realize when I was at a sixth grade basketball game and my coach swore and I went, I literally can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just left the game. <laughs> I feel like my parents always kind of knew too because like my dad would give my brothers advice. My dad would tell my brothers, find a gal that makes you feel like you don't deserve her. Which is beautiful, right? And then he would look at me and be like, don't do cocaine. <laughs> But also, like, me and my brothers, like, we grew up so different from each other. Like, both my brothers are taller than me. They're fitter than me. They carry themselves with confidence, you know? I'm small, pale. I carry myself like an inbred European prince. <laughs> I don't even really, like, step when I walk. I just sort of glide everywhere that I go. <laughs> I know I'm not ugly, though. I know that. Um, like, on a 1 to 10 scale, I don't think I could model, but I could definitely end a Republican senator's career, you know? <laughs> That's what I feel like I'm at. <laughs> Might just go to D.C., take him down one dick at a time, you know? <laughs> no. I, I ended up coming out to my family not too long ago, and my parents, they both have very different reactions. Uh, my dad probably took it the hardest at first. My dad was like, oh, my God, I can't believe my son is gay. I could have a stroke. I could have a heart attack. And I was like, you're being such a queen right now. <laughs> kind of my moment, and you are hogging the spotlight, so fall back. Um, my family is Jamaican, by the way, and homophobia is like our second best Olympic sport. So like, it's like bobsledding, boom, you know? Like, they get to it. I think the funniest thing that my dad said, though, he was like, my brothers are recording his reaction, and he was like, you know, it's like, you ask your son to go mow the lawn, and he just decides to be gay. <laughs> And like, I wanted to be mad, but that's exactly what happened, honestly. <laughs> he asked me one too many times, I was like, I'm gonna go suck a d <laughs> hate it here. <laughs> my mom was a polar opposite though. My mom found out and she texted me and she was like, I love my gay son. And then she started saying shit like, I don't know, maybe I'm gay. <laughs> I love my friends. <laughs> Me and Sandra have a great relationship. Maybe we can make something work. I don't know. <laughs> it was weird, though, because I told my brothers, uh, I have two younger brothers, Javon and Javay. We couldn't afford other letters. And <laughs> my younger brother, Javon, ended up coming out to me as bi not too long after, which was shocking, because, like, another person taking my moment. Uh, <laughs> but also, my mom had a gay child, a bi child, and a straight child, so her womb was basically a gay dance club that became a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> I have a lot of people's attention right now, so I want to leave you guys on something that I feel passionately about. Uh, I think we need to destigmatize black people screaming at the movie theaters. <laughs> because I think white people do a lot of annoying shit at the movies too, you know? And I don't want to be the comedian that's like, black people are like this, but white people are like this. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that, uh, but uh, <laughs> when I saw Call Me By Your Name in theaters, which, if you haven't seen, it's basically Brokeback Mountain with olive oil. <laughs> I realized the white equivalent of yelling at the movies is during like a very prestigious Oscar Betty drama. You just hear someone in the back go, <clears throat> That's annoying. <laughs> Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, when I saw Get Out in theaters, um, the scene at the end where old girl is eating the cereal out of the cup dry, and if you haven't seen it, I'm just gonna spoil it. You're racist, you waited too long. <laughs> the scene at the end where old girl is eating the cereal out of the cup dry and looking up top NCAA pick, <laughs> this lady in the back went,
And that truly enhanced my movie going experience, you know? It's like get out 4D. <laughs> it's like white people in the aisle touching your hair and shit. All right, thank you guys. You guys have been great. Thank you.